Hey guys, it's Total on Maxwell here, and welcome to another edition of WWE Updates. It is day nine of the World Grand Prix. We are now into the fifth round of fixtures with our block A block. Um, mostly the kind of matches on today's show. We do have a tag team championship match. We do have a couple of promos putting over other wrestlers, and we also have a showcase of some of the top women's athletes in our company at the moment. So. Pretty much kind of the halfway point, um, 19 shows, so we're nearly there in terms of there, but it's going to be slowly but surely, you know, figuring out who's going to be the contenders near the end of the tournament and whose luck has sadly ran out. As always, I will put um, between videos 7, 9, 11, 13, etc, the table at the moment down below, and you can see for yourself who you think could be the two finalists for day 19 of the WWE World Grand Prix. The winner will get a championship match at Survivor Series, any championship they desire, and then we'll work it from there. So, without further ado, we'll continue this tour of the globe for the Grand Prix. We've done England, we've done Alberta, Canada, we're in Hawaii today, and yeah, let's hope we get a very good attendance. So, 48,000 137 in the Loa Stadium. And we start off with all red everything, the Swiss Superman, this tandem they have, B plus 84, gets to show off their strong start, gets the crowd hotter, even when he basically putting across that Cesaro is here to win this tournament, and of course, grabbing herself some of the spotlight. So a good little opening there, and that's always what you want, having somebody like Eve Marie latching onto Cesaro's loveliness getting a solid opening segment. Our opening contest in Block A today is a decent match and it sees Alberto Dorio pick up his first points by defeating Bobby Roode in 12.29 by submission via the cross arm breaker. A B-72 is expected by two of the lesser over guys in the tournament, two guys both on terrible records it has to be said, but Del Rio picks up the win. He's a 73 performance to Roode 74. Del Rio continually slowed down by his injury. No skill improvements in this instance. Negatives for both being heels and both having low morale. And after it, basically Del Rio just says, really, this is the competition that I had to face. This is the start of me building up uh, a win, ru winning run anyway to make sure that I win block A. And it's a C plus 70 promo from Del Rio, which gets the crowd a little hotter. As I say, once he's cleared of his injury, He's going to get a, a little bit of a push going forward. Next up, and about that had sensational wrestling and fantastic heat, we had Sami Zayn defeat CM Punk in 1844 by pinfall via a brain buster. This would have been further up the card, but obviously two baby faces here, and I just wanted them to have a, a clean match up here. And no storyline between them as a result of the B81 grade. Punk with a 96, Sami Zayn with a 95. Uh, it has its right place in the card, in my opinion. No worker improvements, and of course the lack of storyline and the face-heel combination is the reason for where it is. But good one for Sami Zayn, putting on you know the fact that he could not only be champion, but he could also win this tournament, which would mean he, you know his opponent at Survivor Series would be automatically chosen with a number one contenders match. Next up, we have our tag team championships on the line, and about they had decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat. The VOD villains defeated the world's greatest tag team in 940 when Aiden English defeated Charlie Haas by pinfall via the director's cut. The VOD villains make defence number 5 of the WWE World Tag Team titles. So, decided to give Haas and Benjamin an opportunity. Pretty good B-77 rating. Haas is getting better his gimmick. He had a 58 performance to Shelton 66. Simon Gotch with a 75 and Aiden English with a 74. In English, improving flying skills, which is good to see. And that was them holding back, so that could have possibly been a B match, should that not be the case. Next up, we have The Miz, who is hyping, saying, you know, once I win the G1, well, the G1, the WWE World Grand Prix, our version of the G1, you know, he's going to show the world that not only is he the best United States champion, he's going to be the next WWE champion. So Roman Reigns, Better be watching out for him. B plus 88, 
great promo from the Miz, the performance was good. No skill improvements, negatives, just for being short. Although I'm not giving every day 5 minutes, maybe I should give them 6. It's more of a habit by me. And he faces the Roman Reigns right after, and an exceptional matchup. Roman Reigns wins in 17-19 by pinfall. B82 here because it's two heels and no storyline. The Miz with a 92 performance, Roman Reigns with a 97, he picks up another two points. Could Roman the same situation as Sami Zayn? And the negatives here, the two that I mentioned. Next up, we have Emma defending her SmackDown Championship against two Raw superstars. You know, if a Raw superstar had to win, they either take the championship to Raw or they can jump to SmackDown. So, and about they had some decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat. Emma defeated Bailey and Sasha Banks in 9.47 when Emma defeated Sasha Banks by the Roaring Elbow. Emma makes her first defence. A B-76 is good. You know, it's still a work in progress, but I do intend to try and get a women's match up to get to the A's eventually. It's still going to take time. Unfortunately, Emma sustained an L3, L4 disc herniation. A 75 for Emma, a 73 for Bailey, a 71 for Sasha. We'll see how that affects Emma's injury going forward because CM Punk could wear something similar and I couldn't use him like he was really struggling in matches. So we might have to see Emma vacate the championship and that's going to be a bit of a problem on SmackDown if both she and Becky Lynch have injuries. They can work through them possibly, but I'd rather they didn't because it's going to be poor matchups and it's going to affect the long-term health. Especially like people who are going to be cornerstones of the division, unlike the likes of Del Rio, etc. So the only negative was the lack of storyline heat, and we'll see how that progresses going forward. And Sasha Banks got some heat backstage because it was her mistake that caused Emma to get hurt. So we'll check in Sasha's profile after the show to see who has some intention with her. Next up, we've got a promo with Finn Balor, a B83. Obviously, him and Randy Orton have been at it. So he's given a little promo just saying, Viper, stay out of his business. Finn looks like a real star. And the Orton Balor storyline continues. Nothing else to add there. And it's Finn Balor versus Cesaro. And in an exceptional matchup, Cesaro defeats Finn Balor in 1926 by pinfall with a neutralizer after Eva Marie interfered. And we also had Randy Orton distract Finn Balor. So, Eva Marie proving her worth. Randy Orton proving to be the distraction that, you know, will cost Finn Balor the victory. Disappointed it was only a B81. Balor by 96. Cesaro with a 92. The storyline between Orton and Balor continues. No skill improvements. And lack of storyline between Balor and Cesaro. But again, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it's it's like the third match from the end, and it was expected to be something like that. So not overly too upset, and you know when you can see people bring out performances like that, you've, you've got to be positive for the future. And then Randy Orton just cuts a promo after it, just saying, "I'm going to keep making your life hell until we get another match." So B plus eighty nine, and Orton. Good showing there. He does need that one last kind of couple of victories to really get him to the next level. Uh, maybe give him one title run over the next year, but we'll see. And in our traditional four-on-four -four matchup, we gave AJ Styles the night off. We gave John Cena the night off, and it resulted in about that superb wrestling and great heat as Rusev, Kevin Owens, Luke Harper, and Randy Orton. Defeated Apollo Crews, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe in 1827 when Randy defeated Apollo Crews by pinfall, illegally using the ropes for leverage. This got an A92. Uh, Orton, as I said, needy victory, so that's another good victory that should give him a little boost, which we can check post-show. Uh, Harper slowed down by his injury. Samoa Joe's best performance in a while with an 80. 95 for Seth, 96 for Dean Ambrose, 93 for Apollo Crews and 90. For Randy Orton, 85 Luke Harper, 84 Rusev, and KO were 94. So hopefully that will boost some of the heel team um, in terms of their popularity and a great resulting rating. So more Joe and Luke Harper both improved their technical performance. And a few negatives there, a bit of inconsistency. 
Luke Harper working injured, Rusev's morale, but overall, nothing to be too downheartened about. Just hope our main event is as successful as this. It's a big one. Uh, that's why I'm hoping it does a good rating. So Bray cuts a promo. A95. It says he's done it to Cesaro, but it's really just everyone else who's in the survival storyline. Uh, I don't like doing freestyle angles. I'd rather just focus on one guy in this and, and cut the promo on him. Bray looks good, and he's just saying he's going to win this, and he's going to be the man who challenges Roman Reigns, so everybody else who thinks they're going to be that guy, forget it. Wow, no, it flopped massively. What? And about that had sensational wrestling and fantastic heat, Bray Wyatt defeated Shinsuke Nakamura in 22:40 by pinfall with a standing senton splash. During the match, we also had Braun Strowman run in and attack Nakamura. So Strowman causes a distraction. It only gets a B minus 75, which is disappointing. The announcing job by Cody Graves was weak. It got the crowd buzzing. Shinsuke by 91, Bray by 100. The reason I think this has flopped so much is I booked it. You give me two seconds in my road agent notes. As a spectacle, I thought both guys would have a great level of psychology, so maybe that would have you know took the match up to another level. Um, hopefully, our co-main has saved the rating. If it was pop, it doesn't really matter too much. You know, I mean, I can't even go uh, get great pop every show. You know, there's going to be ups and downs, especially with the way the industry moves. But uh, it's a learning curve, that's, that's one thing it is. Um, ah, there we go. The crowd was already on an emotional high, so I probably shouldn't have done that because of how good the co-main was, so lesson learned from me. Don't use a spectacle, you know, if you're going to do that, bring the crowd down a little bit. And obviously there'll be a big pen uh, penalty, penalty for um, the lack of associated storyline. So it's a shame. And luckily we do have a segment to end the show, which basically just sees... Shinsuke Nakamura getting beat down by the Wyatt family. The other Wyatts make their uh, way to the ring. Baron Corbin, Braun Strowman and Luke Harper. So that's a B85. Shinsuke looked good. Braun underperformed. But again, putting him in these kind of angles is only going to help him. And then um, we finish the show. Harp, uh, sorry, Wyatt joins in with his other brothers. Shinsuke gets some help from other baby faces on tonight's show. Likes of Sami Zayn, Finn Balor. Cena comes out just to jump in as well because he's part of a storyline with them. And a pretty good A95 there. Cena and Wyatt look excellent. Sane looks good. Strowman and Corbin underperform, but that's to be expected. It's going to be a long process that this tournament can only help them, you know, gain more popularity from constantly being involved with Bray Wyatt. So a few negatives there, and we end the show. A B82, so pretty much where we need to be. We might get a little punishment from, um, you know, the networks because some will be an 83, but it's not horrible. Thankfully, the angles and the co main saved us. But we've learned something about the main event. Don't use spectacle when your crowd is already high. So we'll give a good performance to Randy. We'll give it to Rusev, try and keep him happy. And we'll give it to, you know, I'm going to give it to Alberto just to try and again improve his morale. So praise them all for, well, we'll compliment Del Rio, but we'll praise everyone else. And Orton's pleased, Rusev's pleased, and Del Rio pleased as well. So that's at least in five matches in. Bray Wyatt is on an absolute tear. And it's really going to be down to, can anyone stop him? Or is Bray Wyatt going to be the man, you know, that gets his opportunity to challenge for a championship match. So the other thing as well is that is us into November now. So I still have 10 shows to book um, before Survivor Series. So I'm thinking it's going to be free, free and free. Uh, with one, so how's that going to work? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And the Wednesday before Survivor Series, which is the last week in November, um, we'll have a massive like pay-per-view event which will have uh, the grand final and, and stuff like that before Survivor Series at the end. So it's still a long way to go, but I mean, I'm enjoying it, and, and hopefully you guys are as well. So Evolve are having a crisis. Can we buy you? I don't want to buy them out, actually. I'd, I'd rather just, you know, not. 
putting them as a development company, that would be the plan, but no, I think it's probably because, like, most of the, the roster is um, kind of here. Whoopsie, my bad. But uh, Teddy Hart has declared he's only one true star in FIP. So Emma's injury, it seems like she can work through it, but then again, CM Punk was similar. Physical, yep, so we'll double check that on um, the medical screen. There we go, the, the bit of tension there with Mercedes KV. So I'll get me to sort that. Let's see what else we've got. World of the Weekend saw Mia Yim star of the show again. And she took on Lisa Marie Veron or Victoria. Uh, World Grand Prix, how did it draw? 45.09, so that's good, and 33 million viewers. So again, good rating there. It was just one week, it was pretty much down. But that's good to see. And overall, vast majority are enjoying it. That's good to see. And Kevin Owens. We'll put you up by 11 grand nearly. So he gets a good increase to his contract. We're looking to get Jonathan Gresham to development, so we'll be fighting CZW for him. Obviously, we know about Emma's injury. Uh, it's not a highly regarded event, so because I've done 10 of them very quickly, um, folk are really starting to care about this. And I probably would not be surprised if I'd done a few of these that it um, ended up surpassing WrestleMania's importance, but I say I think this might be just a, a one-off this year, uh, just because of the sheer magnitude of uh, shows we're having to do, but that's good to see. Uh, so what we had to check was, one, Randy's popularity has went up a little bit, nothing great. We had to only look at Corbin, so Baron Corbin has 60s, over 60s across the board, that's good. Braun Strowman, similar, so they're making very good progress here. If you just want to look at the track progress, you'll definitely see, you know, 48s up to 65s, and he's only been on the main roster for a month since coming back from developmental. Corbin, if we did likewise, you would see that he's came a good way inside, just over a month, you know, up 20 in some places. So that's good to see. In terms of popularity, they've definitely benefited from being with Bray Wyatt, Harper. He's a good one, but he's, he's certainly not been pushed as strong. Um, uh, as you can see, usually about the 60s, the last two months, his game has been beneficial to him. And he's come on a long way. But so the one I'm, I'm most proud of is still Miz. Fair enough, he lost tonight. But you know, the fact he went from nowhere, effectively, in April after WrestleMania, kept losing, gave him a couple of wins, and have slowly bought him up in the space of maybe five, six months from a 62 to, you know, B plus A, A, A across the board, pretty much apart from that. So, good position. Uh, Emma, we'll see. It's just uh, obviously the summer intention with Sasha. Is anyone else annoyed at Sasha? Not just um, Emma that's unhappy with her. That's cool. What I want to check then is medical. And it would affect Emma for two months. So, hmm, I need to see what I'm going to do with that championship because I wouldn't want her fighting with that injury because it's just going to affect her even more. But injuries we have at the moment, every one we can work through. Del Rio still got 46 days, Becky with a year and two months, Emma with two months, five days for Enzo Amore, 14 days for Luke Harper, and 11 months for Toggy Maccabee. AJ Styles still has a good bit of fatigue on him at 33.1. Um, we do have Raw and then SmackDown, so I'll keep. he's not going to be in Raw, he's a SmackDown superstar, we'll keep him off SmackDown. And hopefully he's ready for Wednesday for day 10. If he's not, we'll give his opponent a default victory. So, apart from that, we'll check the finances. Wow, we did not make as much profit as I thought we would. We actually, uh, obviously we're as high as like 190 million. And I thought that would be fine. We'd maybe drop to 180. 169. So, we did like... By far, make so much more money than any other month. You know, made twenty-seven million pound profit. Pay-per-view revenue was thirty-five. Eighteen million for ticket sales. TV revenue was up. Sponsors was pretty much the same, maybe up a little bit. Your big, obviously, your spend. Your workers was fine, but you lost two million in costs. 
uh, your miscellaneous and taxes where you lose a lot of money. So not as much profit as I would have liked. I was hoping we'd honestly still be about the 180s. But there's no reason we this month being pretty similar why we can't make it uh, all the way up to 200 and then maybe drop down just under. I'll maybe put some of the shows that uh, should be on TV to pay-per-view. Uh, in terms of the Grand Prix, just mixing up a little bit, just say there's like a marquee matchup that's due to take place. Uh, but apart from that, still enjoying it. And the tournament's halfway through, and as I say, I'll keep up, he's updated with the standings as we go along. So all I can say is, guys, thank you as always for tuning in. It's been a pleasure as always. To say, the fourth week of November is more of a Survivor Series, so all these shows have taken in place between Hell in a Cell and Survivor Series. So hopefully, you know, we can get the tournament done, we get the right outcome with it, and we get a good storyline coming out of it. And we get a lot more title defences, and, you know, we can learn more about the lore card. And as you can see here, a lot of events now, just purely because a lot of geo branded stuff as well. So as always, thank you for watching. It's deeply appreciated. This has been 21 Maxwell. As always, any comments, any predictions on how you think it will go, let me know. Uh, any likes and subscriptions are deeply appreciated, appreciated as well. And of course, remember to spread love to the rest of the TW YouTubers and Dynasty guys that are doing it on the likes of Grey Dog Software and Reddit. And just keep supporting the community as a whole. But until next time, thanks again for watching. See you real soon. Bye-bye.